Thanks for tuning in. My name is Mark Claypool. I'm a professor of computer science at Worcester Polytechnic Institute. It's an engineering school near, near Boston in the US. Did this work with Ed, Tian, ZJ, and Jokun and their students. And we're looking at latency compensation and cloud-based game streaming. Supported by Google, who are our makers of the Stadia system. <clears throat> so traditionally, you take your game console and you have it in your living room or your computer room or whatever you have at home, <clears throat> where as a player, you're sitting down, you provide input, the game console renders it, displays it on the screen, you then react, nice tight loop. You might have local latency from the system, but other than that, it works pretty well. Emerging uh, technology are these cloud-based game systems. And there's a whole bunch of vendors that are building them, including Stadia, but also Amazon, Microsoft, Nvidia, and Sony. And the idea is you take your game console that was in your living room <clears throat> and you push it out into the cloud. And so now the, this is doing all the heavy lifting. It's doing all the, <clears throat> the game computation, the physics, the rendering and so on. But you still want to get all that to the player. So the player over here no longer has this sort of full fat client. It has this thin client where you provide input in your living room. And all that input, though, has to go up across the network to the cloud server where it gets processed. Now the frames aren't displayed, but they're rendered as video and they're streamed down to the client. And so, so there's lots of advantages to this. There's a few disadvantages. Happy to chat about after the talk or during the break sometime. Um, but in particular, one major disadvantage you can think of <clears throat> is that there's now new latency. So here we only had local latency. Now every action has to go through this round trip time from the client to the server. Now, traditional games have dealt with latency for a while, traditional multiplayer network games. And in fact, they have this whole set of techniques called latency compensation techniques. They're designed to overcome latency. <clears throat> and this is a taxonomy we're developing. And that's another talk for another day. And, and I'll go through with that. But there's a whole bunch of techniques that have been established that would help with latency. And these are all for traditional games for the most part. So games where you have this fat client. <clears throat> but we already know that we can't do a whole lot of that kind of stuff because this client is thin in a cloud-based game system. It can't do processing. So there's a whole bunch of these techniques that don't work. <clears throat> so companies like, like Google and other providers are looking for new ways of compensating for latency. Now this paper that I'm gonna talk about today, we're talking about a technique called attribute scale. So, so it's a new technique. So attribute scaling stems, inspiration stems from this idea of flow. If you're a game designer, you've probably heard of this. <clears throat> the idea is that you have sort of two major axes, you have difficulty and skill. And, and the idea is that a game designer has an experience in mind, sort of this vision where the game is going to be fun. And as you, as the player gets better, the game gets more challenging so that it's still a challenge to play and it keeps that, that funness. So that, that's the idea here. So as the player gets better, you, as they get higher in the skill axis, the game itself gets more difficult. With the idea that it's sort of this sweet spot, this flow, where if you can keep the game designed in that space, the player will sort of be maximally immersive on the most fun. And it's not a strict linear relationship. It's kind of fuzzy wanders through here. But if it gets too hard, that can be frustrating over here. If it's too easy, that can be boring. So the idea is to keep it in that, in that zone, in that sweet spot. So what happens when we have latency, when we have delay, you take what could have been a perfect experience for the player, you've now made it more difficult. So the player's, the player's not happy. So put it another way, if you kind of take a look at this space, <clears throat> where this is game difficulty on this axis, and you got fun on that axis. You know, again, there's a sweet spot, just right. So, so that's where the game is maximally fun. It's the, the most fun it is. And that's, again, often for a developer, they've developed it for that game console in the living room, and, and they've tuned it, and it's you know, lots of testing, play testing, and, and there it is. That's the best place to be, right? But so if you get the game too easy, eh, no fun either, but they've gotten it here. But if you have lag, now we're talking about the game being too hard. So the fun has gone down. So what we can do is we can try and adjust the game difficulty. So do that on the fly so that we can, we can tune it so that we move them up the curve so they're back to the, where the game is more fun. Okay, so, so that's the idea. Game is more difficult with latency. So let's see if we can adjust the game to kind of keep the performance in that, in that flow, in that sweet spot, players in the zone. So here's uh, attribute scaling applied to a simple game, Flappy Bird. And so we'll call it Flappier Bird. So the idea is Flappy Bird, if you, if you don't know it simple enough to describe, you have kind of one button you hit, you try and have a bird fly left to right where these obstacles, these pipes, you can see it in this picture, kind of are coming out the player. You have to time your flaps just to make it through the pipe. And so the idea, again, you've tuned it and everything's good so that you flap and make it and flap your play. And then you make it for a little while on your list and you know, whatever, you've tuned the game that way. But now when you're playing this in a cloud-based game streaming system and you have this extra latency, what happens is you go to tap the button at just the right spot and that latency causes it to be harder to do. 
And in fact, what happens it makes it harder to hit. So now the challenge has gotten harder and it's no fun, it's too frustrating. So what we can do is we can do attribute scaling and we actually can change the, the game world. So in this case, you can sort of see in the far right picture where you've taken those, those uh, pipes and you've spread them apart a little bit further. You made it a little bit easier for the player to actually flap, and make it through, the, through that gap <clears throat> when there's latency. So we can, we can do that live real time, that's the idea. All right, so Flappy Bird's simple, you might say, oh yeah, there we go. Even a simple game like Flappy Birds has lots of attributes that can be scaled. So we're talking about the, the, the gap between the pipes, but you could also change how, how the, the separation, because that changes the difficulty also. You can change the pipe width. You can change, you can scale attributes about the bird, gravity, maybe uh, jump velocity, uh, speed. <clears throat> so even a simple game like Flappy Bird has lots of attributes to scale. So it's a rich space that game designers can, can tweak in order to keep the game fun. And the idea is hopefully we can do those tweaks, adjustments uh, live based on latency. So how to adjust those? Well, probably the adjustments depends upon lots of stuff. What game you're playing? I was talking about Flappy Bird, but in practice, it probably has to do with attributes about the game actions. And these are some at, uh, uh, attributes that have been proposed by the researchers. Uh, check my paper for references, but precision, that's how precise the action is. Deadline, how soon does it get enacted? How important is the action? That's the impact. Uh, can you predict what's going to happen? Uh, what is the rate? So how, how uh, rapidly do you have to actually provide input? These are all been proposed as ways that uh, uh, actions are impacted based on latency. Sorry, latency affects the impact of uh, uh, how actions are, how these actions are impacted by latency. So what we're doing in this paper is, first of all, can I go ahead and take an action and see if it, I can scale it? Does it work? So can I assess player performance with latency and with different amounts of scaling? If so, can I model it? Can I generalize the use of that attribute scaling method so that game designers can, can do it? All right, so how are we gonna do that? This is our methodology. Um, so we're gonna develop some games that have a scaling action in place. We're gonna conduct a user study to see if we can understand if, if this attribute scaling is working. And if so, we can hopefully generalize it. The generalization will be in the form of a model. So the model is gonna provide scaling. We're gonna evaluate it in a game, take that model, stick it in the game, see if it makes the game more fun with latency. Um, we'd like to generalize that. So that means pushing it into a game engine and then deploy it in the real system and evaluate it. All right, that's the, that's the bigger vision. This paper talks about these first three steps. That's the, the, the towards in the title of the paper. So we're, we're working towards this. We have sort of these first three steps. So develop some games, conduct a user study, see if we can model that attribute scaling and suggest how we might use it. So we have two games. We've, uh, the, the students have designed two pretty fun games, Catalyst and Nova. Catalyst is a three versus three multiplayer capture the flag game. So where players are first person looking through the eyes of the player, they're, they have a bunch of projectile spells they can cast, kind of like, like shooting. Some are defensive, some are offensive, different kinds of things. And they, they work as a team to get flag and get points in, in, in combat. The other game we've developed is, is Nova. Nova is a single player game and it's a, uh, a rhythm shooter. So it's a rhythm game, if you know Guitar, Guitar Hero, where you have music and when the music plays notes, you kind of uh, provide your input with the notes. Here, you're, there's these asteroids that are coming to hit the player's ship and you have to shoot them within the window. So as the beat goes, boom, you, you shoot at the same time. So you're in the zone, clicking on notes and, and trying to hit it as the music's playing and avoid, avoid destruction by the asteroids. All right, so two games, both of them play tested, you know, super fun, we have lots of people play them. They're, they're, they're cool, graphics, everything's custom, uh, designed by the game designers to tweak and, and, and balance and that kind of thing. Can we make them more playable with latency? So we have to come up with attribute scaling. And there's two different ways we've done this. Catalyst is going to scale the hitboxes. So the idea is that if I'm shooting an opponent with a spell, and if I, I tune it so that, yeah, it's a you know, kind of, there, there's the box, I can hit them, a scale 1.0. What I'd like to do is make a, a version of it that's easier to hit if there's latency. And so let's try a scale 1.5. But here we've scaled the hitbox to be one and a half times bigger, and then twice as big on that side. So here the hitboxes are shown for, your, for edification only. They're invisible. So the models are the same. It's just that your spells will hit in a, in, a, in a bigger target area if you're casting them. So Catalyst is using this as an attribute scaling, scaling the hitbox size. Nova is using something a bit different. Nova has, again, remember this temporal idea where 
you have this time window that you have to hit the note in, hit the, sorry, hit the asteroid in that, that coincides with the note. And if you miss it, then that means the asteroid is going to hit you. So that's this temporal window. So we can scale that. So kind of the base scaling of 1.0, we can make the scale that window time-wise can be longer and even longer. So we can scale that with three ways too, right? So we can, we have, Nova uses a temporal scaling technique. So what our approach is, is to, is to a user study where we're going to vary a whole bunch of parameters and we're going to see how users do. So, you know, can we control things that does this technique work or these two scaling techniques in these two games? So we're going to vary latencies, of course. So we have four different latencies we're going to look at from you know, no latency, kind of a local system, the 125 milliseconds. That's kind of the upper end of what most cloud game providers are looking for. So we have this full range of network latencies that are sort of our cloud-based game systems. We're going to look at different scaling values. So those one uh, sort of standard up to twice as big. Uh, again, you often can imagine a game designer knob is how hard is the game? Remember, we wanted to keep them in the flow. So we'll look at difficulty. So if you make the game easy versus hard for Catalyst, that has to do with how fast the opponents are moving, so their speed. If you're looking at Nova, we're talking about um, how many beats are, are spawning per second. So how much, you know, the music is flying around or it's relatively simple. Okay. So, so these are the, the parameters that we're going to vary. We're going to all combinations of each, get users to play it, observe how they're doing. So the users come in. Uh, give us a survey. Let's get some demographics. They play one game first, shuffled. They're going to play both games. For each game, they're going to practice a bit so they know how to play. Then they're going to play a round of the game with, with a certain lag, certain latency, um, play it for like a minute. Uh, then they're going to, we're going to shuffle the settings. So they're going to have a different latency, difficulty, and scaling, because again, we're going to look at combinations of those and repeat. So they do that over and over again for all combinations of every uh, parameter we're changing. They actually do each three times. So in about, about a 30 minute period. And then the idea is we're going to look at the results. Um, so, so we had 23 users that participated in our study. Um, we, we wanted you know, 30 or, or, or more. Um, we did this during the pandemic, like, like lots of research nowadays, and a little tricky to get people to, to participate. But, but again, we're happy with this number, 23. Um, from our university is, is, our, is our population. Our, our sample is drawn from there. So mostly university age, um, mostly males. Our, our university is mostly males, but we had six females also. Um, and they're mostly gamers. Um, they play on average 10 hours per week. These are some sort of core demographics. So not enough to slice it up further by, by different groups, but that's sort of a, a, a reasonable size sample to explore our approach. So we first are going to look at accuracy. So, so catalyst accuracy is, again, shots fired over shots, sorry, shots hit over shots fired. Nova accuracy is the notes hit also, and it's actually over total notes that are spawned. So you could say that's, that's the notes that come in. How many of those do you hit? So we're gonna try and model accuracy because again, this is how the player is doing. How's the player performing? So this is a graph showing both games. Uh, here, here's the results. Um, the x-axis is, this is latency. So we have four different latencies, no latency added up to 125 milliseconds of latency added. And then this is catalyst is the top graph. So we're looking at accuracy. So how accurate is the player? So this is catalyst. And this is Nova. Both have accuracy, slightly different measures, but they both have accuracy. Um, the data is shown with box and whiskers plots, where so box and whiskers goes, the bottom of the box is the first quartile, Q1. Top of the box is the third quartile. Middle line is the median. Uh, we have a mean dot there for each. And then those whiskers go to the largest non-outlier for each side. So you can, you can look, first of all, there's lots of variation. Uh, the spread of the boxes sort of how much do, do players vary. And again, people vary from game to game. So that's not too surprising. Even, even players, they, they don't play consistently over the game. There's lots of variation. So there we're looking for sort of trends. Um, and you can see that there is a downward trend, certainly the mean values, that's for Catalyst. Likewise, there's a downward trend in, in, in Nova, you know, sort of a range. So as, as you added latency, the game apparently did get uh, harder, at least the player performed worse with latency. We also have data on the scaling. So does scaling make it so that the accuracy can go up? And again, these are our scaling values. Again, with Catalyst, uh, we're scaling the hitbox size, 1, 1.5, and 2. With Nova, we're changing that temporal window. So again, 1, 1.5, and 2. We're looking at the effect on accuracy. Again, same box and whiskers here. And so, so again, the upward trend, you can sort of observe it. So as you are scaling using that scale factor, we're getting a larger, uh, a higher accuracy for for Catalyst and a higher accuracy for Nova. So scaling seems to let us have a knob to counteract maybe the performance degradation from latency. The other knob we might want is, is for the game designer to, is difficulty. So we have, again, we've tested two difficulties. The speed of the avatar is, is for Catalyst at the top. Note spawn rate 
for catalyst on the for sorry for Nova on the bottom. We get a box of whiskers and and sure enough, you know, we have this knob that lets the game designer if they change the difficulty, we can hopefully adjust the settings of the game also based on that knob for each. Okay, we did some statistical tests, see if there those values are difficult, uh, statistically significant. So for each game, is latency scaling and difficulty are those statistically significant for the parameters we set and the p values look look good, kind of for both. Suggesting that as we change latency, as we change scaling, as we change difficulty, sure enough, that has the intended impact to accuracy in terms of predictions. Okay, so it seems promising. So, so next step is, so let's model that. So, so what are we modeling exactly? Well, can I predict accuracy? So given for catalyst, given a, a given latency, given a scale value, and given a difficulty of the game, can I predict what the accuracy would be? Right, that, that's this equation. Uh, nice and simple, add them linearly. Uh, these are the coefficients. You know, each millisecond of latency decreases accuracy by 0.08. That's how you read that, for example. The scale factor increases by 20 for each number and likewise difficulty. So, so those, those are, you could put meaning into the coefficients if you want, want but, but either way we can predict, predict accuracy uh, with R squared of 0.95. So, so pretty strong for catalyst. Uh, Nova, uh, here's the equation for Nova. Again, different constants, you know, different scaling method, different game. Uh, R squared isn't quite as good, but, but still maybe reasonable. So suggests we can use data to predict the accuracy for each game. We have a model for each. Um, now, the accuracy wouldn't be what the game designer would use. And what you're really doing is, you know, what we want to do is, is let the game designer say, hey, I want them to have this experience, right? I want to be in this flow zone. And if they have a latency, that's where I want to scale it. So we actually want to flip these around and, and adjust it to scale. So Catalyst would say, can I predict, can I, can I compute what the scale should be? So the game designer says, I want 80% of my shots to hit whatever the right tune is. I mean, that's uh, how difficult they want to make the game. The system itself is going to measure the latency. So what is the latency from the client to the server? And then the difficulty is baked into that current level, whatever you're playing. And so using this equation, the system on the fly would automatically scale and catalyst the hitbox. Similarly, we could do the same thing for Nova, of course, different parameters and so on, and we can scale the temporal window. So as the player is playing, if a player has a lot of lag, it would scale their temporal window accordingly. If the level got harder, because the game was getting harder, you could scale it accordingly and so on. So you, you would adjust the scale to fit the current situation in the game and in the player's network. Okay, so this illustrates how it might work for Nova, just as one, one example. So the game designer might want, oh, I want about 80% uh, accuracy because that's the right challenge. You don't want to be too easy, not too hard. That's in that flow zone. So they would tune it that way, uh, 80%. And so that'd be the right scale. They'd figure that out. And then as, the, as they, the player might have latency, so as the player is playing the game, a player, a certain player might have 55 milliseconds of latency. So it would scale you know, their, their um, experience appropriately. If they had more latency, it would scale it even more. And if they had you know, 125 milliseconds of latency, it would scale it even more. So it would scale the experience. So instead of the player having this degraded experience, they would actually have a constant experience in what the latency was in terms of their performance. So that's how, that's how we'd use it. Um, and, and that brings me to the sort of the end of, of this paper and I'll talk about next steps. So to rehash, you know, cloud-based game streaming is coming. It's actually here. If you haven't tried it yet, go try it. This paper is talking about a new latency compensation technique that we were trying to develop for such systems called attribute scaling. And the uh, uh, first couple steps, we've built some games, we've tested our parameters, we've drive models. And the idea is, what do we know? Well, actually it does vary. So player performance varies with latency, scaling, and difficulty. And more than just varies, we actually can use that to build models of player performance, which will let us adjust scaling automatically. And so the models work really well for Catalyst and Nova, and they let us pick scaling values that will keep performance at about the same rate. So next steps, of course, is actually, we've done those first three, let's try it out in a game. So we have the model, looks promising, try it out in a game. So develop, take the full game, live latency, have the players play it, see how it works. But we wanna do more than that, rather than having it in game code, which we can do, like we, we know we, we can, we're gonna take that same model and stick it down into the engine. So the game designer can go ahead and make use of it, just saying, hey, engine, scale my hitboxes, for example. So we're doing that in Unreal Engine, so we can push that in Unreal Engine, you can deploy that, uh, Stadia lets you deploy Unreal Engine game. So we deploy that with Stadia and then now we have a live system and then we're going to evaluate. So that's where we're going. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge students at the Bill Catalyst, Alejandra, Joseph Cameron, Adam and James. So Cracker Jack set of students that did that. 
equally talented set of students, Michael, Nina, and Alex. They built Nova. It's awesome. Uh, the Google Stadia team has been awesome in supporting this uh, work and getting us uh, stuff to be able to deploy this in Stadia. Brian, Doris, Elizabeth, and Philip. So thank you for your attention. And hopefully I'll have time to uh, answer any questions. <laughs>